Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Welcome to THG News Today with Mervyn Hanley. It's good to be here with you today. We are programming for Thursday, July 25th, and I believe today is the official opening of Nevis Culturama, the Summer Festival. It's the 50th anniversary celebration, and I just want to encourage and say to the revelers and even the onlookers to please, please be safe out there. And I want to also encourage you, if you're driving, then you know, of course, in especially in all this excitement, please don't drink. And if you're drinking, please don't drive. And not just for Nevis, but for the different islands who would be celebrating festivals and carnivals. You know, I am saying to you, just be careful out there. And while we're on the festival and carnivals, but before I say this, let me say the news is powered by Carl and Sons Unique Bakery on St. Martin with three locations and the thesis on Nevis. And as far as Culturama is concerned, remember folks that the big jackpot of $50,000, it's only 100 EC. You, you don't have to be a citizen or a resident of St. Kitts or Nevis. You don't have to be living on the island. You just purchase your tickets. Uh, there's the flyer. Or if you'd like tickets, you can contact me. I have tickets as well. That's at one 867 Four, three. That's one eight six nine six six seven seven four four three, and win yourself fifty thousand dollars. Just WhatsApp me, and uh, we'll make the arrangements from there. And remember this grand drawing, no matter where you are again, not necessarily have to be a new vision or living on Nevis. The drawing takes place on August 1st. And from what I am hearing, the tickets are going. And I am not just saying that just for, to get a sale for, for, for the organizers, but the tickets are going. So I am saying to you, get yours today, today, today. Yeah. Now, also on a programming note, folks, we did say that July 31st, we will break until August 12th as we are in the middle of so many celebrations. Some THG will give coverage to and just days for us to reboot. So instead of next Wednesday, July 31st, tomorrow, Friday, we will sign off until August 12th. That's when we, we are all back from holidays, vacation parties, and all the festivities. Uh, of course, if there is breaking news, we will share it with you, no doubt. Uh, so again, after tomorrow, we will break until August 12th as it relates to THG News Today. Other stuff I am sure will be posted, but as far as the morning news, we'll break until August 12th. Now, <laughs> listeners and viewers, we have a problem. There is a problem plaguing our islands, and I call it terrorist attacks or terrorist acts of gun violence threatening our people, our economy, and it's across a number of the islands. What do we do? Let's deal with St. Kitts and Nevis first, but I, re I will read to you a report from the St. Kitts and Nevis uh, Police Force, the, the St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. I know that last night, the Honorable Dr. Terence Drew, he addressed the nation over the recent murder that took place on Tuesday night. A, a very sad there on the island and um, we'll have more on the the PM's address later on but the address came at the right time um, I'll get to the police statement shortly but I just want to say that I also take note that they also took note that the leader of the People's Action Movement Natasha Shani Gray Brooks she also addressed the nation yesterday over the recent murder and also leader of the People's Labour Party on St. Kitts the Honourable Dr. Timothy Harris something got to be done let me just read of course the, the the police they are making headway hopefully from this press statement in the in the case and um it goes like this at approximately 7 58 p.m on tuesday july 23rd the police received a report of a shooting incident at new road housing several police units were dispatched Upon arrival, officers discovered the lifeless body of Sandra Roberts, a 54-year-old resident of New Road Housing, lying on the road outside her home. Preliminary investigations indicate that Miss Roberts had just arrived home and parked her vehicle on an empty lot located on the eastern side of her residence. As she exited her vehicle and proceeded towards her house, she was confronted by two masked gunmen who emerged from nearby bushes and opened fire. My God. <sighs> Miss Roberts sustained multiple gunshot wounds to her body and head. 
resulting in her death at the scene. The district medical officer attended the scene and pronounced her death. The crime scene unit processed the scene and several items of evidential value were recovered. The body was removed and pending an autopsy. Four men have been arrested and are in custody, assisting the police as the investigation continues. The Royal St. Christopher Nevis Police Force extends its deepest condolences to the family and friends of Miss Sandra Roberts, and they are urging anyone with information related to this incident to come forward and assist with the investigation. Or you may call the Violent Crime Unit at 662-3468. That's 662-3468 or the crime hotline at 707. <sighs> That's Sinkits. And then we know that there has been a surge in gun activity and violence on the island of Angola. And um, I listened to an address to the, the nation, per se, and to the island from the Angola House of Assembly by the Honorable Jose Vantapool. And uh, it was just, it just resonated with me. So this morning, I would like to, for, for, for us to take a moment and take a listen to this message. According to Honorable Vantapool on his social media page, he hopes that this message gets to those who truly need to hear it. And he's calling for a ceasefire and that enough is enough, right? So at this time, the reason why I want to play this is just not for Angola, because I believe he was speaking to other Caribbean islands and neighboring islands who are going through a similar situation that Angola is going through right now. So when you hear this, you can relate to Honorable Vantipool and what he's saying. So here is the Honorable Member of Parliament, Honorable Vantipool, and then we'll be right back. With respect to the issue of gun crime and violence, we have literally seen this issue now arrive at our doorstep. Last Friday, we would have seen that where in this chamber, we would have conducted the sessions for the Gun Crime and Violence Committee. Right on the other side of the door, last Friday, a young man was gunned down there, Madam Speaker. That young man has been one of many in a recent spate of incidents in Anguilla, Madam Speaker. And I really want us to ask ourselves, when will enough be enough? When will we get to the point where we decide that we cannot, as a small society, take this anymore, Madam Speaker? Madam Speaker, when I ask that question, I'm not just asking on it as behalf of us, the elected leaders. Today, it's literally on our doorstep, but it's only a matter of time until it ends up on the next family in Anguilla's doorstep, Madam Speaker. What these people don't understand, that it's not Eastman versus Valaman versus Westman in that traditional sense, Madam Speaker. While East is battling against West, really and truly what it is, is Anguillian versus Anguillian versus Anguillian. When somebody goes across the island and commits a crime, they are not only injuring the target, they are spreading hurt on levels that I don't even think that they comprehend, Madam Speaker. The victims of these senseless crimes, they have mothers, fathers, children whom they support, who know who is going to support those children, Madam Speaker. They have families. And oftentimes, Madam Speaker, because we're such a small society, the families extend across the depths and breadths of the island, Madam Speaker. Ultimately, they are not only figuratively, but literally killing their brothers and their sisters, Madam Speaker. And with each one of these crimes that is committed, there's a certain level of pain, hurt, and anger that spreads throughout our community, Madam Speaker, and understandably so. But again, we have to ask ourselves, when will enough be enough? Madam Speaker, I want to advocate for a ceasefire. I want our young men to put down the guns and end this senseless nonsense. And I understand that it's easy to say, okay, just stop. But then someone who would have recently gone through the loss, the pain, that anger, to say, well, how are you going to tell me to just take this? They just took this from me. They just took, they injured me in such a way. I want to get justice. I want to get revenge. Well, Madam Speaker, to the persons who feel that way, okay, you're going to enact that and hurt somebody. Cool, you've gotten your revenge and your justice. How long until a family member of the person you just hurt comes and hurts somebody else close to you? Maybe it may not be you. Maybe you're not fearful of your life. 
But what about those around you and those closest to you? What if it's your child? What if it's your parent? What if it's your sibling? We have to get to a point, Madam Speaker, where enough is enough. When an eye for an eye is the law of the land, Madam Speaker, the entire nation will go blind. Will we wait until it gets to that point? Now, Madam Speaker, I don't even want to go into the other ramifications because really and truly there is nothing more important than protecting our young men and protecting the members of our society. There's nothing beyond or more important than making sure that our young men can live long and productive lives. But what are the other ramifications, Madam Speaker? At a time when we are supposed to be coming together and we are inviting persons around the world to come with us and celebrate a time that is supposed to be of happiness, of joy, of coming together. The carnival theme, Madam Speaker, is the family reunion, a time when we are supposed to be uniting as a family, as a community, and as a nation. It's the same time when we seem to simply can't get it together. So, Madam Speaker, it goes beyond just ruining a carnival festival. What happens when young men <laughs> become endangered in Angola, Madam Speaker? Not only for fear of East can go West and West can go East, what about the employers when they get to a point where they say, you know what, we are so fearful that we're going to stop hiring young men. How are these young men going to now provide for their families? If it's hard enough that you can't get jobs in a certain demographic simply because of where you're from, what about when they stop hiring all of you all together? How are you going to provide? How does that benefit you and your families? <laughs> Madam Speaker, that has long-term impacts because if we stop hiring young men into our labor force at a certain age for fear of the involvement that they may be in, what happens when these old men become, young men become old men and now they want to get into the job market and they have no experience? What happens to the economy where we have no persons of a certain entire age demographic trained simply because we needed to keep them in a box out of fear, Madam Speaker? Madam Speaker, I have long felt that enough is enough. I know what it is like to have these unfortunate incidents end up on your doorstep, and it is not nice. It is not something that I would wish on any family or even my worst enemy, Madam Speaker. We really, as a society, need to say that this is where we draw the line. It means that each and every one of us needs to make it our moral and civic duty to fight against this scourge of gun crime and violence, Madam Speaker. It means that if you are a parent and you know that your child, your niece, your nephew is involved in something or they have a gun, you need to not turn a blind eye because, okay, you may feel like you're protecting them in doing so, but when the retaliation comes and your son is with your nephew or your daughter is with your son or you are with them and they have no remorse, don't care, and the pain goes way beyond what you ever imagined, what do we say then? Oops. Madam Speaker, with every one of these incidents that takes place, we further spiral down and down and the issue snowballs. That makes it even more harder for us to stop. The only way to put an end to this is to have a zero tolerance approach. Madam Speaker, on the Just the Facts program yesterday, I referenced a poem that came to mind. Watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your words, for they become your actions. Watch your actions, for they become your habits. Watch your habits, for they become your character. And watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. Madam Speaker, when we look at our society around us, I have to ask, what is it that our people are thinking that are leading to the words that are being spoken today? What is it that we are going around and saying that is leading to the actions that are taking place, Madam Speaker? And how can we change this so that we can change the result that we're seeing around us, Madam Speaker. We need to go back to the days when it actually is a community raising a child and not children raising themselves, Madam Speaker. I think we have gotten to the point where we as a society may be even afraid to correct children when we feel like they're stepping out of line due to repercussions. And Madam Speaker, we need to fix this. Because when we are not speaking to our children and we are not getting into their heads at an early age, what is? What influences are they listening to that are driving their thoughts? What is it that are the words that are coming out of the mouth? What are their actions that we are seeing them doing? And what are each and every one of us doing to step in and stop it, Madam Speaker? That is something that I want us to reflect on because truly enough is enough. 
How many more of our young men do we have to lose? How many more mothers have to be crying over their children? How many more children have to be raised without fathers? We ain't even talking about the future impacts to our society that will be derived from that, Madam Speaker. If we have one, because let's not forget we are based on tourism. Madam Speaker, I just wanted to share that. I felt compelled to, and I want to admonish each and every one of us as leaders, as Anguillians, to come together and say and declare that enough is enough and put an end to this, Madam Speaker. And with that being said, I want to wish a happy Carnival 50 to all Anguillians, all visitors who are coming, and hopefully the family does come in well and large from the diaspora, and we have a true family reunion, Madam Speaker, one that is safe, one that is happy, and one that is not marred by these senseless acts of violence. May that incident of last Friday be the last incident we see in Anguilla in a long time, Madam Speaker. Again, I advocate to all of our young men, put down the guns, let's end this violence, and let's build, not destroy Anguilla. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm telling you, what a leader he is in his own right, yeah? And I hope that his message resonates not only with the people of Anguilla, not only with the government and people of Anguilla, but also the government of neighboring islands and the people of neighboring islands. Until tomorrow morning, God's willing folks, at 6 o'clock Atlantic Standard Time, when I present to you the last edition of THG News Today until August 12th, I am Mervyn Hanley. Take care of yourselves. Arlinsons have been serving the people of St. Martin for over 40 years. And the food and service get better and better. From early morning, customers flock to the bakery for their favorite sandwiches, cakes, pastries, you name it. First thing at mornings and last thing at afternoons, folks rush to Collinson's for simply the best. There are two locations, Cold Bay and on the Pondville. In Cold Bay, the opening hours are Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. On Saturdays, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. And on Sundays, 6.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Opening hours on the Pondville, Monday to Friday, 6.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 6.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. We also cater for weddings, parties, special events, whatever the occasion. It's Carl and Sons. Our staff, we are always happy to serve you. Call us today, the Colby location, 721 544-2462 That's 721-544-2462 Or in Phillipsburg 721-543-1059 That's 721-543-1059 It's Carl and Sons Bakery We are here to serve you Mavis, satisfy your sweet tooth at Feezers, the cozy spot in Charlestown, known for its mouth-watering ice cream and dal parade. We are open Monday to Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Come in and sample our patties, sandwiches, ear fried wings with fries, hot dogs, rotis, and now our famous smoothies, in all flavors, of course. And don't forget to try the famous bus of shut and saltfish. It's Feezers, located at the entrance to the Cotton Jewelry Mall in Charlestown, Nevis. They are also available by phone, so place your order by calling 1-869-665-2458. Don't ask about the rest, just try the best.